News Reel History was made on Epsom Downs, the Derby filmed for the first time by Pathé News in Technicolor. Everybody, real live dukes, lords galore, plus royalty, pearly king variety. There's no extreme that Derby doesn't justify. It should have been easy, without having stable connections or being psychic, to find the winner in so small a field. But advice from a professional prophet is always worth it at Epsom. I've got a horse! I've got an ass to beat the favorite! Who pay to income tax? The bookmaker! Who stop all wars? The bookmaker! Who give you money for nothing? The bookmaker! If you are lucky! Gully, 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 gully! Now, ladies and gentlemen, once again, the Derby 1960 is with us. I'm going to make a statement that if I'm wrong, then I will be condemned, because I venture to suggest that the first, second and third in the Derby will definitely go to either French or Irish horses. A hundred pound of weight die hard. I'll a hundred pound of weight die hard, I'll lay. Rich man, poor man, beggar man, income tax collector. The Derby's for everybody. Sharing the interest of all her people, the Queen was at Epsom. Lord Rosebery escorted her to the paddock. What a colourful scene it all made. Here was the chance to see the runners at close quarters. Despite Angers, other horses were highly favoured. Tolyatus, for example. Britain's main hope against the French and Irish invasion, St Paddy, owned by Sir Victor Sassoon, looked well. There was a thrill as into the paddock came the little men on whom so much depended. Even their superb skill, the derby course severely tests. Joe Mercer was up on Chrysler III. From the vantage point of the Royal Box, knowledgeable eyes were turned on the horses parading along the course. Lester Piggott had some paddy under good control. Arger seemed nervous, but the tragic drama awaiting him was such as not even master film director Alfred Hitchcock could have imagined. Nor did anyone in the near record crowd know how terrible a fate lay so soon in store for the favorite. Below, the field of 17 gave no trouble at the tapes. This was the moment for which the whole racing world was waiting. The greatest classic of the flat season was about to start. Mr. Alec Marsh appraised the behavior of the field. All 17 were under starter's orders, and without difficulty, he got them away first time. A mile and a half to go. The most exacting test of speed, stamina, and rider skill in racing. Leading at this stage were Port St. Anne, Oak Ridge, Marengo, Ides of March, Kithnos, and St. Paddy. As they pounded down the slope towards Tattenham Corner, the French colt Arger, hot favourite at 2 to 1, broke a fetlock, though few people were aware of it at the time. The rest raced on. Tudor Period, Die Hard, Oroy, St. Paddy, and Marengo making the running. As they rounded the corner, Die Hard was a shade in front of Tudor Period, with Oroy and St. Paddy well up. It was here that thousands began to wonder what had happened to Arger, and it was here too that the real drama of the derby entered its decisive phase. Furlongs out, Kithnos had a good chance, but Lester Pickett, brilliantly timing his effort, and placed third from the rails, took St. Paddy to the front, held off the challenge of Alceus, and began to look like the winner if he could keep up his speed. And maintain it he did. Kithnos was fading. Alceus had no more in reserve. By three lengths, St. Paddy won the derby. Alceus second, Kithnos third. To one, St. Paddy was a most popular winner. For golden boy Lester Piggott, perhaps the best Epsom rider since the immortal Steve Donahue, it was his third derby win. Lucky owner Sir Victor Sassoon was congratulated on his fourth derby victory in ten years. A wonderful horse, St. Paddy, too good by far for the rivals from overseas. And what a gift for thousands of punters. We do hope that the golden shower fell in your direction.